strong San Francisco 49er fan. Uh, Jeff Garcia needs absolutely no introduction for me. Gilroy's own. But it, it's it's great to see that he does. Uh, he, he's, he's got the roots. You know, Sacramento and the Niners have long had a, uh, a great relationship. And anyone that's doing good stuff for kids, uh, I'm a huge fan of. If I wasn't a fan of his already, I want to tell you about the Jeff Garcia football camp. That's June 4th. So that's a week from this Sunday. Right here in Sacramento, you can go to jeffgarciafootball.com. This is for kids 7 to 13 years old. It's going to focus on character development, competitive mindset, highlighting a bunch. It's not, in other words, not just football. You know, it's the it's the mental game as well. All training, all refreshments, everything 75 bucks Sunday from 11 to 2. Can and- I sign up? Uh, it's, are you between seven and 13? I can forge. I, I mean, size wise, I hear you. Oh, wow. That up. was a shot at you. Go to Jeff Garcia football.com and we'll, we'll put those out on our socials and we'll uh, say them again at the end of the segment. But, uh, it is our honor to welcome in 49 and great Jeff Garcia. I'm Dave. That's Jay. Good morning, Jeff. Hey, what's up guys. Hey man. Thanks for having me on. Sorry. I'm moving around. Is that better? You see yes. now? Yeah, you're, now you're great. Got the full scope. Hey, listen, it, I, it, to, I got to throw a little Garcia five in the background, you know, look at that. <laughs> hey, if it wasn't for as a, as a fellow, uh, as a fellow, uh, I like to call them blonde in my uh, <laughs> facial hair, but if you were clean shaven, Jeff, you haven't aged at all. <laughs> I mean, you know, the hair is pretty much gone. And, <laughs> hey, hey, man, I, that happens I, to I all of us. It, the beard, the yeah. beard is a distraction to take away from the bald head. You know, I mean, who wants to confirm. see the bald head? They see the beard and then the smile. Hey, but you know what? Um, I, hey, I've, I've been blessed. I've been fortunate. I stay active with my kids. I have four, and Oof. they're all extremely active. 11-year-old, 12, 13, and just turned 15 so four four kids in four years and uh you know they're a lot of fun they keep me going um they keep me involved yesterday i coached my youngest daughter in her little uh championship basketball game which we won for her school and she's a little stud and just like makes me uh so happy to watch her just and watch all my kids just be a part of sports and and learn through the ups and downs of what sport teaches you And that's really what I love doing for the youth that I get to go out and whether it's coaching or running camps, running skill camps, uh, coaching Pop Warner football, coaching basketball, whatever it may be, you know, it all is about becoming a better person. It all is about a becoming a greater contributor to your community, becoming a better son or daughter, a better brother or sister, uh, a better student in the classroom, being respectful. We have some challenges with our youth at this time in these days that we're we're living in right now with all of the technological uh, uh, advancements and and distractions. You know, kids don't want to get out and just play anymore. Their idea of playing is getting inside, getting into a room with four walls and having a TV or a screen in front of them. And that's that's what they are 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 moved and and motivated to do. And how do we, how do we get them to see how health and physicality and, and, and activity is going to benefit them having balance in their life. And, you know, to be able to come to Sacramento, because I know there's a strong, strong 49er uh, backing out there, Bay area backing with both, you know, the 49ers or the former Oakland Raiders, uh, whatever it may be. I know there's a lot of fans out there, in the SAC area. And for me to be able to bring this camp out that way, I know we got a late start on it, but I teamed up with Marlon Moore, a former, you know, high school standout there in Sacramento, played in the NFL for a couple years. He's actually interning right now as a potential coach with the Carolina Panthers. So, hey, we wish him well, but we teamed up. We're going back to his old high school at Natomas High School and there in Sacramento. And we're going to just have a great camp for that 7 to 13-year-old age group. Hey, whether they're playing flag football or tackle football or just love football in general, we want to invite them out. We want to run them through drills, create a competitive environment. Hey, put a smile on their face, get them active, get them social, get them around other kids, and just battle for three hours and have fun doing it. And I love to just get out there. I love to just demonstrate 
show them what it's all about. Hey, how at 53 years old, I still love to get out there and, and compete myself and show that I can still do it. I can still throw the ball. I can still throw that 15 yard comeback on a dime on time like it needs to be thrown. But that's really what I enjoy doing. We're going to my hometown the following week on June 10th in Gilroy to do another camp with all of my hometown people there in Northern California. So I'm excited about this. And hey, thank you for giving me the time to get on and talk about it with you guys. Now, of course, Jeff Garcia joins us. And again, I want to remind you that's June 4th right here in Sacramento, jeffgarciafootball.com. And we'll throw that out there at the uh, end of the interview and on our socials as well. Jeff, I got to ask you a Niners question. And for you youngsters out there, I'll see how well my memory works. Uh, all you had to do was come in and replace some guy named Steve Young. Oh, I've heard of him. Uh, yeah, he was he was good lefty. <laughs> they got a BYU, and uh, if I if I remember right, as a Stanford kid, you and Steve Stenstrom that finished that year, uh, you held on to the job even though the Niners uh, they they drafted uh, oh Jesuits Gio Carmazzi from up here and uh, Tim Rattay, same year some Brady kid I think was drafted. And uh, all uh, you, Mike Brady. Uh, yeah, all you did was make the Pro Bowl. All you did was have a phenomenal career uh, with San Francisco under huge amounts of pressure. And now you look at your old team. We don't know what goes on in locker rooms because we've never played NFL football. But you have the the number three uh, pick, the kid that uh, got hurt in Trey Lance. You've got literally Mr. Irrelevant and Brock Purdy uh, also coming off an injury, but who seems to have the locker room. And then you have Sam Darnold, another former number three pick out of a huge school that was with Carolina and the Jets and now comes into Kyle Shanahan's offense. My question for you, long-winded as it is, do, does is it a matter of just picking the best guy or is it the best guy that has the locker room with him as well? Well, I think it's the guy that operates the offense, the system, the best. And Brock Purdy showed last year that he can be consistent week in and week out. He gets his athletes involved in the game you know up until the point when Brock Purdy stepped on the field even with Jimmy out there why was George Kittle not being targeted if I had a George Kittle on my team I'm trying to get him the ball just like a T.O. you're trying to get him the ball 10 times a game because once he gets the ball in his hands great things happen whether it's catching the ball in the flat a five yard out a 10 yard hook over the middle but he was getting four to five targets a game. And I'm like, that's one of your most dangerous weapons on the field. And you're not utilizing him. All of a sudden, Brock Purdy steps on the field. The ball starts getting spread around. Hey, Kittle becomes more involved. I mean, how many touchdowns did Kittle have in the second half of the season? He was he would have been probably all pro with those stats throughout the season, which he is an all pro caliber tight end. But that being said, you look at the first game against one of the worst teams in the National Football League, which turned out to be the Chicago Bears, yeah. and we struggled. Yeah, it was a rainy day, but I thought Kyle was trying to acclimate his system to Trey Lance, which you have to do. As a great coach, you involve a certain skill set of what your guys are capable of doing. But his system works for athletic quarterbacks just as it is. They're going to get you on the bootlegs, on the sprints, on the movement-type plays, and then at times, you're going to have to create within the pocket. You're going to have to extend plays. But running quarterback dives or off tackle, you're asking your quarterback to do some things that running backs are asked to do on, a, on an every down basis. Don't ask your quarterback to do that. And I think in a lot of ways, that led to the injury. Unfortunately, in the second game, you're running an off tackle quarterback read, and he's running up in between 300 pounders. Nothing good is going to happen in that area between the tackles. When you get Trey Lance outside the pocket, when you utilize his skill set to now become a run pass option out there, which is what Shanahan's offense is so good at creating because of that zone run game. Everything they do off of that zone run game, they now run the bootlegs, they run the keepers, they get the quarterback out in space. Now he's got a great opportunity to, hey, find an open guy like Kittle Crossing or Debo Samuels, or, hey, if nobody's covering him, he can run for 10 or maybe more. That guy's capable of taking it to the house. But looking back at last season and what Brock Purdy did, he did something really special, really spectacular in how he played the game, especially as a rookie. He's going to be that much better this year. The competition is going to be good with Trey Lance. Hey, you can't eliminate everybody or anybody. I think that's the 
the the unfortunate part of the quarterback position in the National Football League is that organizations do not want to ruffle feathers. They're too concerned about, oh, he's our starter. We don't want to make him worry about his job. But every other position is open to the best talent available. Why isn't the quarterback position like that? You got to have the best guy on the field. It's like when I went to Oakland, Jamarcus Russell, he was the number one pick in the draft. He was going into his third year. So all of a sudden, no matter what he did in his first two years, he's the automatic starter. Well, why? He hasn't done anything. He hasn't proven that he deserves to be the starter. He's not a leader for the team. He's not doing the necessary things outside of the, the off the field to prepare himself to be the best for that team. Why is he just the automatic starter? That's bull crap. You have 50 plus other guys working their tails off to be the best that they can be. And we're just going to settle because of the draft choice. This guy's our, our number one guy because we drafted him high and some GM, some guys thought that he should be our, our top draft pick. So now we have to start him. No, you start the guy who's going to take you down the field, put points on the board, eliminate mistakes, do the right things for your team, get your athletes involved, and be a leader in the locker room. And right now, Brock Purdy is that guy. The one guy we didn't touch on real quick, and I just want to get your opinion of his career, so to speak, was uh, Sam Darnold. You know, you played, obviously, in a lot of organizations. You played Tampa, Cleveland, San Francisco. You mentioned the Raiders, which I think is a really good example of this. How much can, whether it's the organization as a totality or the coaching staff, the offense, and the stuff they put around you, really affect you as a quarterback because, you know, we speak of Sam Darnold and all the talent has not been in good situations so far throughout his career. Yeah. You know, looking back to Sam Darnold coming out of college, right? He had a great freshman year, lit the world on fire. Second year was not as consistent, not as solid of a season there at SC, but decides to declare early for the draft goes number three, goes to a New York jet team that hasn't been, very good, struggled in a lot of ways. You're anointed as the guy because you were the number three pick. Hey, you got to get on the field. Oftentimes, you know what? I look at the draft, right? You look at the Cleveland Browns, year in and year out. They draft a quarterback in the top five picks generally. What happens to those quarterbacks? Well, they fizzle quickly. Why? Is it the quarterback or is it the team? You're looking at a team that's always drafting the top five picks. Why are they drafting in the top five picks? Because they're terrible. They're terrible in every other place on the team. It's not a 22 or 23 or 21 year old kid that's going to come in and fix that immediately. If I'm building a team, I'm building it from the foundation of the offensive line and defensive line, and I'm working outwards. If you don't have an O line and a D line, you don't have a team. Hey, the 49ers, they've done a great job of building that defensive line. Hey, they rotate eight, nine guys. They're dogs. They get after people. That helps the secondary be so much better. They got a great, talented group of linebackers. They fly around. They got a lot of speed. Hey, they address certain things in the draft this year on the defensive side. They got a safety. They got a corner. Hey, they're trying to strengthen that side of the ball. Offensive-wise, they got a pretty solid offensive line. They still, I think, can look at some pieces to secure that. But, hey, they got a lot of pieces to the puzzle in place. And so a young quarterback – who now just has to make good decisions and distribute the rock. I'm not saying it's that easy, but when you have Kittle, you have Samuels, you have Ayuk, you have a good running back and a good running game, hey, it simplifies your, your need to be perfect all the time. And so looking at what Darnold has gone through, whether it was in the Jets or the Carolina Panthers, I think this will be a great opportunity for him to come in as a number three to get – Back in the, the mode of a working, of challenging himself to mentally get stronger, get better, decision-making wise, get his footwork down. Too often times now, I just see laziness in the pocket by these quarterbacks. They're so used to playing in the shotgun formation. They become so lazy with their feet. There's no timing, no rhythm, no throwing receivers open. These young quarterbacks are waiting for guys to get open. Then they try to hit them and it's too late. The windows of opportunity are so small that you got to be ahead of the game. That's why Joe Montana, Steve Young, even Tom Brady, hey, the great ones, they throw guys open. They anticipate. 
they're in they're they're in rhythm with their feet their feet are flowing in the direction of their target location like drew Brees used a practice in pregame hey he'd make a throw and then he'd go to his number two he'd go to his number three with his feet it was all repetition mentally these young quarterbacks hey they start to lean on one guy to get open and he doesn't get open and now they're struggling to find number two or now they don't know where to go and uh thing about brock purdy is he knew where to go with the football and that was impressive to see last year hey he didn't take a lot of sacks he didn't take make a lot of mistakes when things broke down around him he lengthened the field with his feet or made positive yardage with his feet he became a threat as a runner you know i'm not going to say those were certain things that reminded of me but like there were things out there like that. Hey, he's a smaller stature guy, but that doesn't matter. He understands the game. He understood defensive coverages. He understood what was going on offensively and where to go to, to where to go to with the football. And that was impressive. I think Sam Darnold is going to have a great chance to kind of rectify himself in ways, take the pressure off of him. He's not the starter. He can now sit back. He can learn. He can practice. He can grow. And now he's in a position where he's preparing in case that opportunity arises for him again. Jeff Garcia with us. Jeff, last thing for you, you know, you're, you're, you're obviously being humble. Your first full season, you go for 4,300 yards and 31 touchdowns. You're, I think, one of still one of 12 quarterbacks that have consecutive 30 touchdown years. I know you're one of 12 to throw a 99-yard pass. You and, and your road to that spot was absolutely not the normal paved road. So for you coming into that locker room, taking over for Steve Young, having the personalities you had on the team, was there a moment, was there a time where you felt like you had the locker room behind you or were they there from the beginning? No, I wasn't there from the beginning. Obviously I came into that locker room looking at Steve Young as the leader of that team and looking at a great opportunity to learn from one of the best to ever play the game, a future Hall of Famer. All of a sudden he goes down and in week four and I'm stepping onto the field and, and uh, you know, learning trial under fire, so to speak. And, uh, you know, there were a lot of lessons learned in that first season and, and, and some challenges to overcome and some doubts that had crept into me as to whether I even belonged in the NFL when things started to struggle and go downhill for me um, in the first five games that I started. I started to doubt myself. I started to like feel all that pressure on me. I felt like, well, people are looking at the 49ers like the only change is at the quarterback position and now they're terrible. What's going on? And so I was assuming all of that on myself. And when they did bench me for a couple of weeks and they put in uh, Steve Stenstrom from Stanford, you know, that year we had the three local colleges represented as the quarterbacks, San Jose State, Stanford with Stenstrom and Cal Berkeley with Pat Barnes. Right. And, uh, you know, the San Jose State kid was a starter. Just want to let everybody know. <laughs> right. the Spartan, the Spartan Spartan. Was a starter. So <laughs> don't you forget about that, Stanford and Cal. <laughs> but, hey, that being said, I struggled. They benched me for two weeks, and then I came back on the field, and I realized, hey, there are a lot of things going on with this team. It's not just the quarterback position. Things didn't change when Steve stepped onto the field. We still struggled. And I kind of alleviated some of that pressure that I was putting on myself to be perfect, to be Steve Young. Hey, go out there, be yourself, be a good decision maker, get rid of the ball, get your guys involved, get Jerry Rice, get T.O. involved, get all those weapons that you have involved and, and just play. And the second five games, the last half of the season that I started in were tremendous, different, a totally different guy. But that led into that second year where I did throw for 4,300 yards, became a pro bowler. That's when I feel like I really started to stand out in my teammates' eyes. Like, hey, this guy is a baller. He is a leader. We can count on him. We can ride his back. Hey, he's going to take us where we need to go. And then the next year, hey, we went 12-4 and four in the regular season and, and so on. We just continued to build and move forward. And, you know, it's unfortunate when Steve Mariucci was fired after the 2 season. You know, that was a big blow to us as a team because we had really turned a negative situation into a positive and we were going in the right direction. And uh, then again, it just, you can't have that 
that lack of continuity, that inconsistency at the NFL level. We see the teams like Detroit. I mentioned Cleveland. The teams that struggle year in and year out are the teams that are always trying to find the quick fix, the new coach, the new GM, the new quarterback. You can't have that at the professional level. Teams will eat you up alive. Jeff Garcia with us. I mean, he's got this locker room. Just to let, yeah. I mean, I've, I've been a fan. Let's and go, baby. Any Niner, any Niner fan is already going to be a fan. But man, just the the local aspect. If for those of you listening, and it's not like Jeff's eighty years old or anything. I mean, but but read about Jeff. Jeff's road, the things Jeff's gone through, the 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 things personally that he's had to overcome. It's it's incredibly inspiring. So if you have a kid. Uh, between seven and thirteen, uh, that you want to have a good experience with somebody who's thrown to Jerry Rice, that's thrown to Terrell Owens, that has uh, had an amazing career. You have Pro Bowl or a multiple teams. Yeah, <laughs> listen, you, you get a chance to put him out there this Sunday for seventy five bucks, which is a steal at twice the price, and uh, really have hands on uh, experience. Jeff, listen, the good news is. We're going to continue to plug your camp and get some kids out there. The bad news is, uh, my new friend, I have your cell phone number now. And uh, <laughs> don't think I won't be hitting you up at some point to come back on because we just, I know we love talking to you and judging by the text line and our YouTube chat and everybody else here, uh, people love hearing from you. So we appreciate you. No, hey, I have, I appreciate you guys taking the time to have me on, man. And, uh, you know, always great to talk to Northern California people about the Niners, about just the local stuff that goes on out there and i'm excited to to be out there you know i'm actually heading out there for a charity golf event and we're trying to hey make a couple things happen but you know i'm out there to support a group that is uh helping families that are affected by sex trafficking by domestic violence and hardship it's called precious lives precious lives golf classic is on the fifth the next day and it's at rancho marietta country club but you know, that's the real reason why I'm heading out there is really to bring awareness, bring support. And then I thought, you know what, if I can get out and reach out to the kids and get those little football players, those little footballers out there and we can run around and have some fun, let's do it. That's awesome. We appreciate it. Uh, shoot well, shoot them straight, and then also uh, <laughs> have fun with those kiddos. And I hope we, uh, hope we have the opportunity to talk to you again in the future. Absolutely. And you guys can come out and help coach, man. Come on out. Let's go. No, you're trying to, you, these, can't even no, you, you're, you're trying to help these kids. <laughs> yeah. not, we need guys that are going to get towels full of water, <laughs> bring them over the kids, bring water to the kids. Hey, we need those people. Hey, <laughs> where we've people find value. People That's find true. value in you. You bring so the best out of us. Come out and help out. Can't Thanks. wait for an eight-year-old. Hey, get my water. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, brother. Have a good one, Jeff. All right. Thanks, Jeff. All right. Take care. That is Jeff Garcia. We are way late for a break.